Hello everyone, I'm Hu Hu. First of all, I want to say my English is not good, so I may use words inaccurately. Hope you understand. And I'm learning English now. Hope you guys could give me some help, like correct my words using and pronunciation. Well, let's start today's topic. Recently, several large smartphone manufacturers has unveiled their brand new flagship smartphones. Such as Samsung Galaxy S9 and S9 Plus, Xiaomi Mix 2s, and Huawei P20 and P20 Pro. We have seen an interesting phenomenon. At a smartphone conference, most of the time they are talking about taking pictures. Why? Maybe because the performance gap between smartphones is getting smaller and smaller, and the appearance is more and more similar, so they can only find the gap on the camera. As a result, the most mentioned at these conferences was a testing company called DxO Mark. They have originally dedicated to rating professional cameras and lenses. Now they also rate the smartphone cameras. Xiaomi announced at the conference that the DxO score of their Mix 2s catch up with iPhone X, and even wrote it on the official publicity web page. However, just a few hours later. The unveiling of Huawei P20 Pro truly shocked everyone. It received a rating of 109, the highest rating ever, surpassing the iPhone X more than 10 points. And the photo part got an unprecedented score of 114, which totally crushed Apple and Samsung. For this result, some Huawei fans are very excited because Huawei finally beat Apple. But some people expressed suspicion. Is the DxO rating reliable? Today, let's simply analyze their testing articles and results. Let's take iPhone X as an example. Find its detail page and scroll down to the bottom. You will find that this 97 is actually an overall score that contains several subcategories, include exposure and contrast, indicate whether the brightness of an image is appropriate or not. The detail of the highlight and shadow areas and the dynamic range means the range of luminous value between the darkness and the brightness perceptible points in the image. Color, autofocus, texture, noise, and flash. These five subcategories are easy to understand, so I will not elaborate on them now. And moreover, artifacts like Moir patterns or ghosting, etc., that shouldn't exist. Zoom means change the focal length. Take pictures at several subject distances. Bulk, which is the out of focus area, such as the blurred background. Now I believe that you probably have the same questions as me. The importance of these subcategories is entirely different. How do they calculate the total score and how to distribute the weights among them? For example. I believe that most of your photo taking situations do not require the flash. Its importance cannot be compared with the color at all. Assume that smartphone A got 90 sub scores of color and 70 sub scores of flash. Smartphone B got 70 of color and 100 of flash. Which one would you pick? Of course, DxO is not just combining all of the subscores. They definitely have a very professional and detailed algorithm. However, I think the weight of these subcategories is obviously different for different people. For example, some people think that the most important thing in an image is color, but some people will perform Photoshop processing or add filters to almost every image they take. In this case, the color is insignificant. The difference in color between cameras is completely negligible compared to the filters. Also, textures, noise, artifacts, bulk, and zoom. Are all related to clarity. Some people are particularly concerned about the clarity, but some people think the ordinary clarity is acceptable. Or even if it's important, it doesn't have to take up so much weight. The zoom subcategory, obviously, smartphones with a telephoto camera will predominate. For example, Google Pixel 2 only has a single camera, or Huawei Mate 10 uses a black and white secondary camera. And their zoom subscore is very low. Is this fair? Look at this comparison chart. 
Google Pixel 2's overall score is two points lower than iPhone 10, but its exposure and color subscores is higher than iPhone 10. And because it only has a single camera, the zoom subscore is almost half lower. If you never use the telephoto camera, do you still think iPhone 10 is better than Google Pixel 2? And for the autofocus function, the tolerance for taking photos and taking videos is entirely different. For most ordinary people who are posing for shooting, slow focusing is actually not a big issue because it will not be too slow, just need to wait for a second or two. However, because the video image is coherent, when the scenery changes, you don't want your footage hunting around for focus all the time. Besides, I think that DXO rating of video shooting is kinda inappropriate. Look at this sentence. Use the default 1080p 30 frames to shoot. Why? Why use the default setting? Huawei P20 Pro's video score is nearly 10 points higher than iPhone 10, but iPhone 10 supports 4K 60 frames which P20 Pro doesn't. If I usually shoot 4K videos, then supporting 60 frames is apparently more important than many other subcategories. By the way, Mix 2S doesn't even support 1080p 60 frames. Also, iPhone 10 supports HEVC, high efficiency video coding, which offers about double the date compression ratio at the same level of video quality, means that your storage space has doubled. Isn't this a huge advantage? But the DXO score is only concerned with the image quality of 1080p. In most cases, people only care about how to use their smartphone to shoot the best video. Instead of reducing 60 frames to 30 frames for testing, just for the so-called fairness. Now let's wrap up. Is DXO rating worthy of reference? I know I point out so many problems and you probably think I would say no, but the answer is just the opposite. I think it doesn't only have reference value, but also very useful for reference. I'm very grateful for having such a testing company to provide us with so many professional data. We must know that it's very complicated to quantify the image quality. And also it's difficult for the amateurs to read so many professional terms. But the scores make it so much easier to understand. Back to the topic that we talked about at the beginning. Does Huawei P20 Pro really beat iPhone 10? Yeah, absolutely. Let's compare to the subscores. We will find except for the artifacts, the other subscores are all higher than iPhone 10. But in fact, discuss which smartphone is better is not the purpose of this video. I just want to let you know how to consider of the DxO scores in the most reasonable way. Instead of just looking at the total score, we should understand the importance of the subscores. In this way, you can truly understand the camera style and features and make the best choice based on your actual situation. By the way, there's usually text-based pros and cons analysis below the subscores, which is also very valuable because many things cannot be described simply by numbers. Okay, thanks very much for watching. I hope my thoughts could give you some help. And if you like my video, please leave me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. See you next time. Bye bye.